Lesson 1.5, Multiplication Patterns, Powers of 10, and Mental Math. There's a link in this description to video 1.4 where we first learned about powers of 10 in case you missed it. We can use a basic fact and a pattern to multiply by a multi-digit number. Patterns help us predict what comes next. We can start with a basic fact, such as 2 times 4 is equal to 8, then write more equations with additional zeros in factors until we find the product of the original problem. So here is using a basic fact and a pattern to solve 200 times 40. Our basic fact is 2 times 4. That's equal to 8. We can add additional zeros and do 20 times 4. Our basic facts are 2 times 4. Now it's times 10 to the first power because we have a zero here. So that would be 10 to the first power. And that's equal to 8 times 10 to the first power, which is equal to 80. We can add another zero. So we have 200 times 4. Our basic facts are 2 times 4. And that would be times 10 to the second power. We have two zeros, so we have 10 to the second power. That would be 8 times 10 to the second power. That would be equal to 800. Now we do 200 times 40, our original problem. Our basic facts are 2 times 4, and now there's three zeros. We have times 10 to the third power. That would be 8 times 10 to the third power, which is equal to 8,000. We have an 8 with three zeros. So the pattern is, as the exponent increases, we went from 1 to 2 to 3, the amount of zeros in the factors and product increases. So we had an exponent of 1, we had one zero. We have an exponent of 2, we have two zeros, and now the product has two zeros. We have an exponent of 3, now we have three zeros in the factors and three zeros in the product. Using mental math and a pattern, we have 700 times 50. Our basic facts are 7 times 5. 7 times 5, there's three zeros, so it's times 10 to the third power. That would be 35 with three zeros. That's 35,000, we think. 7 times 5 with three zeros. Here we have 3,000 times 800. We think of the basic facts, 3 times 8. That's 24, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, so it's times 10 to the fifth power. We write a 24 with 5 zeros. Using exponents and multiplication makes it easier to count the zeros and write zeros in the product. 900 times 600, we think 9 times 6, we have 4 zeros, so it's times 10 to the fourth power. We write 9 times 6 as 54 with four zeros. We have 540,000. We can solve this equation using mental math by finding the product of the basic fact with four zeros. We think nine times six with four zeros. We have 540,000. We can solve 60 times 5,000 by using the commutative and associative properties of multiplication by breaking the factors apart. We have 60, which we can write as 6 times 10, times 5,000, which we can write as 5 times 1,000. We can use the commutative property to change their order, and we can put 6 times 5 in this parentheses, and we can move the 10 over to here. Now we have 30 times 10 times 1,000. We can change their grouping with the associative properties, so instead of grouping the 10 times 1,000 together, we group the 30 times 10 together. That's 300. Now we have 300 times 1,000, which is equal to 300,000. If you're rusty or missed our video on the commutative and associative properties and other properties, it's linked in this description, description as video 1.3. Let's use mental math to complete this pattern. So let's take a look at the pattern first. We have 6 times 8 is equal to 48. That's going to be our basic fact. Then look, we have the basic fact written in parentheses, and 
it's multiplied times 10 to the first power, then 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power, 10 to the fourth power. We need to fill in the blank spaces. We know 6 times 8 is 48, and we need to multiply it by 10 to the first power. That means we're going to have 48 with one zero. That's 480. Now we do 6 times 8 times 10 to the second power. That's 48 with two zeros. That's 4,800. Now we have 6 times 8 times 10 to the third power. That's a 48 with three zeros. That's 48,000. Now we have 6 times 8 times 10 to the fourth power. That's a 48 with four zeros. We put in our comma here. Let's do it in black. That's 480,000. The product of any whole number factor and 10 will always have at least one zero because 10 has one zero. So nine times 10 is equal to 90. It's got at least one zero because this 10 had a zero. 90 times 10, we're gonna have two zeros because that factor had a zero. So it's got at least one zero, it may have more. And the product of any whole number factor and 100 will always have at least two zeros because 100 has two zeros. So nine times 100 is equal to 900. It's got two zeros. So our product has two zeros, but if we multiply 90 times 100, we're going to have three zeros because that factor had a zero, but it has at least two because of the 100. We say at least because the whole number factor may have a zero, so there may be more zeros. Be careful to include all zeros in all of the factors. Two times 30 is equal to two times three times 10 to the first power. That would be equal to 60. And 20 times 30, that's equal to 2 times 3 times 10 to the second power. We have two zeros, so we have 10 to the second power. That's equal to 2 times 3 times 100, which is equal to 600. And 200 times 300, that's equal to 2 times 3 times 10 to the fourth power. We have four zeros. So that's 2 times 3 times 10,000, that's equal to 60,000. And we can circle the basic facts and count the zeros. We have 2,000 times 300. Our basic facts are 2 times 3, so we can circle those and count the zeros. We have 3, 4, 5, so we write a 6 for 2 times 3 is 6. And we write 5 zeros, that's 600,000. We can use mental math and basic facts to complete this table. So one roll of nickels, one roll, contains 40 nickels. And if we look at the table, it says 10 rolls, 20 rolls, 40, 60, 80, 100. And it's got a row for the number of nickels. We need to write it as a power of 10 with a whole number multiplied by a whole number. So we think we need to do the number of nickels in a roll, there's 40 of them, times the number of rolls. So if there's 10 rolls, then that means we have 40 nickels times 10 rolls. We have two zeros. We can write it as four times 10 to the second power. We think four times one times 100. If there's 20 rolls, then we've got 40 nickels in a roll times the 20 rolls, we can look at it as the basic facts of 4 times 2 times 100. We have two zeros, so we can multiply it by 100. That would be 8 times 10 to the second power. So we need to fill in this space for 40 rolls. And we think, well, there's 40 nickels in a roll times 40 rolls. We'd have the basic facts of 4 times 4 and we multiply that times 100 because we have two zeros. That would be four times four is equal to 16. And we can write this as a power of 10. There's two zeros, so it would be times 10 to the second power. We need to fill in this space. We have 80 rolls of nickels. We know there's 40 nickels in each row, roll. Now we have 80 rolls. 
we think of the basic facts, 4 times 8, that's equal to 32. There's a 0 in 40 and a 0 in 80, that's two zeros, so we can say it's times 100, and we can write that as a power of 10. It's got two zeros, so it would be multiplied by 10 to the second power. Let's look at this one. It says 100 rolls, so we would have 40 nickels in a roll times 100 rolls. The basic facts are a 4 times 1, but that has three zeros, 1, 2, 3, so that would be times 1,000. So that would be 4, our basic fact, times 10 to the third power. That's a lot of nickels. This table is similar to a multiplication table because the number on the left is multiplied by the number at the top of each column, just like a multiplication table. The number on the left is multiplied by the number on the top, and the product is written in the space where they intersect. We have 30 times 4. Our basic fact is a 3 times 4. That's a 12. We have 1, 0. So we write times 10 to the first power for 1, 0. Now we have 30 times 50. Our basic fact is a 3 times 5. That's 15. We have a 0 in the 30 and a 0 in the 50. That's two zeros. So it's times 10 to the second power. Here we have 30 times 600. Our basic facts are 3 times 6. That's 18. And it's times 10 to the 1, 2, 3 zeros. So it's 10 to the third power. So now we can fill in this one. We have 30 times 7,000. Our basic fact is 3 times 7. That's equal to 21. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So it's going to be 21 times 10 to the fourth power for the four zeros. Here we have 50 times 4. Our basic fact is a 5 times 4, which is 20. We have 1, 0, so it's times 10 to the first power. Here we have 50 times 50. Our basic fact is a 5 times 5. That's 25. And we have 1, 2, zeros, so it's times 10 to the second power. Now we have 50 times 600. Our basic fact is 5 times 6. That's equal to 30. And we have 1, two, three zeros, so it's going to be times 10 to the third power. And our last one, 50 times 7,000. Our basic fact is a 5 times 7, which is 35. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, so it's times 10 to the fourth power. Now because this one has a zero, we could change this to 3 times 10 to the fourth power. We could take this 0 and move our exponent up to a 4 and just say 3 times 10 to the 4th power. So this is using basic facts and mental math. We have three factors. We have 20 times 200 times 300. Our basic facts are 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 times 3 is 12. In the parentheses, we have a 12. We count the zeros. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. So it's 12 times 10 to the fifth power. We can write a 12 with 5 zeros. That's 1,200,000. Here we have 40 times 200 times 5,000. Our basic facts are 4 times 2 times 5. 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 5 is 40. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, so we can say 40 times 10 to the 6th power. We can also take this 0 away and make it a 4 and give it to the 10, power of 10, as 10 to the 7th power. By giving this 0 to this side of the multiplication sign, we increase our exponent by one more 0. So we have 10 to the seventh power. We can write a four with seven zeros. That's 40 million. 
Here we have a table and it says anthropod lengths and it's got their names, a cluster fly, a crab spider, a fire ant, and a tree hopper. And it's got their length in millimeters. We've got a nine, a five, a four, and a six. Anthropods are animals that have a hard outside covering called an exoskeleton. 80% of all species living on Earth are anthropods. And they include insects, spiders, lobsters, and centipedes. So let's try some higher order thinking skills. The table indicated that a crab spider is five millimeters and a tree hopper is six millimeters in length. If we want to magnify each of their images so they'll appear to be the same length, how many times their actual size would we need to magnify each image? So we want them to appear to be the same length. So we're going to have to magnify the crab spider times an amount and then the tree hopper times an amount so that they would be the same amount of millimeters. So we need a magnif magnification amount for five and six to meet. So finding a common multiple will help us. We write the multiples of five, the multiples of six, and we circle the ones they have in common. We're going to use the lowest common multiple. 30 is the lowest common multiple. For the 5 millimeter crab spider to appear as 30 millimeters, we need to multiply its length by, do you know, 5 times some number is 30? If you said 6, you're right. And for the 6 millimeter tree hopper to appear as 30 millimeters, we need to multiply its length by 5. Then they'll both appear to be 30 millimeters in size. We found a common multiple where they could meet, and we figured out what they need to be multiplied by to be that size. Look at these two expressions. Which product will have more zeros in it and why? And the hint is we think of the basic facts. We have 50 times 500. We can think of the basic facts 5 times 5. And then it, the answer would be 5 times 5, which is 25, and there would be three zeros. For 50 times 600, we look at the basic facts 5 times 6, which is 30, and then there are three zeros. So which one will have more zeros? This one has a basic fact of 25 and three zeros, so it's 25,000. This one has a basic fact of 30 and then three zeros, so it's 30,000. So if you said this one, you're right. And why does it have more zeros? Because when we multiplied the basic fact of five times six, it had a zero. The most important thing you can remember from this lesson is to be careful so you include all zeros in all of the factors. In our next lesson, 1.6, we're going to multiply by one-digit numbers with regrouping. And I hope I'll see you there. And I hope you have a really good day. Bye.